Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Punch Kick Choke Chat. Uh, it's Thursday. We're back to our 8.30 p.m. time for at least me here in Toronto. And it's such a pleasure for me to see you all tonight. I'm always so happy when you tune in with us. And this is the last of this round of three. And tonight we have uh, an incredibly special guest, someone who Sensei Dolphin is going to introduce to you. But I know through my Sensei Hanshi legacy that uh, I have been taught things that this man does and did. Uh, just through the way this learning happens. And so I'm really excited to, to go to the source on some of the ways we kick and move around in our dojo. Um, and I can't wait to get to that. Uh, my name is Sean Benson. I'm one of your hosts. And uh, it's my pleasure every week to introduce Sensei Nicolas Suino. Um, Nicolas Suino is an eighth degree in Iaido. He's a sixth degree in Japanese Jiu Jitsu, a sixth degree in Judo. Um, and, you know, there's something we don't talk a lot about. Um, we mention it in passing. But much of the success of this show sprang uh, out of our first interview with Sensei Suino because we did this as a bit of a lark. And he was our first ever guest on the show. And we got to break down the whole concept with him as our guest. And we realized that it might have legs and we invited him to be a guest with us. So I just wanna say thank you for that. And also, what are your thoughts now that we're uh, probably 30 episodes in Sensei Suino? It's something that you sort of catapulted in the right direction. Don't you think the real story was we were all desperate to talk because of COVID and uh, I bored everybody to tears. And so the three of you said, listen, we got to get somebody decent on this show. <laughs> and it's just gone uphill since then. Um, uh, gosh, it's, been, it's been crazy, hasn't it? Um, um, what has this been? Nine months now we've been doing this wow. and we've had wow. martial artists from all over the world. And it's just, it's, it's wonderful to see the history behind martial arts in Canada and North America and, and folks from Europe as well. And even, uh, and even one guest who, who visited with us from Japan. It's been, it's been an amazing ride so far and I'm really looking forward to the, to, to the rest of it. But thanks for that introduction, Sean. It's great to see you. Uh, I know we've been chatting offline a little bit about some project stuff, but this is a highlight of my week. I love seeing you guys anyway, and uh, it's gonna be a real joy to meet our guest tonight. I get to introduce Randy Dofan, who uh, is sensei to many, student of mine, uh, also a teacher of mine, quite often when it comes to the karate world. Um, you may or may not know that he's the seventh don in Shorinru Karate. He's a third don in Asian Ryu Iaido, first don in Seite Ryu Iaido uh, under the um, Canadian Kendo Federation. He's had decades of experience in the martial arts. He's been, uh, uh, he's been champion in, in international competitions, both in fighting and in kata. Um, he has helped teach at my school in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, uh, uh, and he is a student of, of one of uh, my favorite martial artists on the planet, Hanshi Gary Legacy. Um, it's so great to see you, Randy. Having said all that, I'm going to turn it over to you because I know we want to get going here. Yeah, thanks, Sensei. I hope uh, now that you have a new president in your country, I'm hoping uh, President Biden lets me get into your country so I can train with you again sometime soon. As long um, as that government money keeps coming, you can put anybody <laughs> in that office. <laughs> okay. Well, I am also, I, I know this is 30 episodes in, which is crazy. We have over 50 hours of talking now on YouTube, over 50 hours uh, logged with some really amazing people and none more amazing than the people that we're going to talk to tonight. Um, but I always, at every episode, I get to introduce both Hanchi Legacy and whoever the guest is. And I like just, you know, I often with Sensei Legacy tell the same things, but I like to introduce some more snippets about who he is and my relationship with him. And so for sure, he's the 10th then, and he was awarded that rank by his current teacher, Anthony Sandoval. He's a member of the Canadian Black Belt Hall of Fame. He's an author. Recently, this is his book, The Elite Fighter. Actually, as is Sensei Suino, and this is one of his many books. Uh, he is a student and trained with, over the years, Harold Warden, Benny Allen, Richard Kim, Anthony Sandoval. And uh, one of the things that I, I thought of uh, tonight is that he always likes spreading the word of martial arts. Uh, and there's never there's never an opportunity that doesn't pass by. And I remember we were at a tournament in the Dominican Republic and we were on the beach and there was these four young kids who were on the backside, there was like a little wash and they were jumping off of this bridge into the water. And we were kind of training and doing some katas on the beach. 
and they started paying attention and none of us spoke Spanish, but Sense of Legacy waved them over and we just did a whole bunch of, uh, of katas for them. And then some, some bunkai. And I just remember at the one point Sensei said to me, come up behind me and put your arm around me. And as I started to put my arm around him, I said, I'm going to go fly in now, aren't I? And he said, oh yeah. <laughs> right? So, so then the next thing I knew I was flying through the air and there was sand going all over the place. And these four kids who are maybe like between eight and 11 years old were all smiles and all clapping. And Later, I thought about that. That might be the thing that got them on the path to martial arts, or at least left some image in their mind of what martial arts is. And maybe they'd never get to see that again. Um, another thing I want to say about Sets Legacy is to he's totally dependable person. For me, he's always been dependable. Whenever I've needed him, he's always been there. I think everybody knows that he's the, the godfather of all my children. And uh, interestingly, if you asked... Sydney, my oldest, or Sammy, my youngest, who's your number one, number two phone call? I'm not sure. Number one maybe would be me, but it might be Uncle Gare. They would say like, I'm the, you know, they're gonna just dial one of those two numbers and they know if they get a hold of their Uncle Gare, he's gonna take care of anything that they need uh, when they call him. Um, the other thing I wanna mention about Sense Legacy is just uh, one good adventure that we had. We went to Panama, uh, once again for a karate tournament and when we were riding from the airport to uh, the the resort that we were staying in the bus driver said see that pink building off there in the distance that's where Roberto Duran is from that's his apartment and don't ever go there that's a really bad neighborhood and the second said so I see and I got to the resort we jumped in a cab and went to that pink that pink uh, apartment to, to go see where Roberto Duran lived. <laughs> um, so, and that's my introduction tonight for uh, Hanchi Legacy. But I'm super excited to introduce uh, Sensei Wally Sloki, who, again, he'll fact check everything that I say. Most of what I pulled off is off of the internet, and some of it is my own personal opinion. But um, what I've read is that he started his training when he was six in judo, and that was under uh, Sensei Frank Hadashida. He also trained in Kung Fu with his friend, Ted Martin, under Paul Chen. Uh, and then when he got into karate, that was with Masui Soroka and Benny Allen. In 1967, 68, and in 1970, he was the Canadian national champion and he retired undefeated. In 1968, 69, 70, he was the Ontario champion. He was also a top fighter in the American tournament circuit and many other promoters there flew him in to fight with both the east and west coast american teams so he as a canadian was going there to fight with the americans and uh bob wall who if you don't know who he is he he played the villain in enter the dragon with uh with bruce lee uh bob wall said that wally sloki is one of the top two or three best fighters ever to come out of canada if not the best he's fought against and on teams with legends like Bill Superfoot Wallace and Joe Lewis. He was also rated number one in the world for full contact karate. And as a four time North American karate Kung Fu champion, he eventually passed that crown off to Billy Blanks, who that's also an interesting name in history. Uh, multiple times he's been on the cover in within Black Belt Magazine and Karate Illustrated. And after retiring from fighting, said Sisloki focused on teaching. And in 1983, he started Super Kids uh, Karate, which is a children's karate center that grew to 17 locations. There was actually one here in Kitchener, I remember when I first moved here. Um, uh, and there they taught not only technique, but also the history and the philosophy of martial arts. Um, He's one of the founders of the Canadian Black Belt Hall of Fame. And in 2006, he was actually inducted in. And very interestingly, he was inducted in with names that I just mentioned a little while ago. He was inducted in in the same year with both Paul Chen and Sensei Frank Hadashida and John Park Su and also Sensei Masui Soroka. Um, I've, trained, I've had the opportunity and the pleasure to train with him a, a few times. Most recently, um, I saw him fight against Bill Superfoot Wallace for charity, which was in Ottawa for the, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, where they raised, I think it was like $30,000 um, for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. 
um, it was great to see him fighting with those two legends in the ring is something that I'm never going to forget seeing. Um, he was also instructing and I wasn't aware that he was going to be instructing. And when my daughters came to me, uh, Cheyenne and Sammy and, and Sydney, and they said, here's the list of people that are going to be teaching today. When I saw Census Loki's name, I said that if you only go to one, that's the one that you want to go to and, and train with today. Um, other people that I really admire, like a person that I found to be an inspiration when I didn't know him was Jean-Yves Terrio. And most recently, I remember hearing the champ when asked, you know, who was it that inspired you to become a fighter? He mentioned Wally Slokey. He said, since Wally Slokey is one of the people that inspired me to become a fighter. Um, this is something that uh, I've only ever heard Sensei Legacy say about about one person and that's Sensei Sloki. And he said, uh, Sensei Wally Sloki is my hero. And I think that Sensei Legacy admires Sensei Sloki, but I know that the statement's much more than just his fighting. It's about the, the decades of contributions that he's made to Canadian and the global martial arts community. So that's my introduction for Sensei Sloki. And Sean, do your housekeeping and let's go. Thanks so much, Sensei Dofen. So yeah, to everybody watching, uh, this is called Punch, Kick, Choke, Chat. This is your chance to just sit in the back seat of the car that's being mm -hmm. driven and uh, you get to hear some adults have a conversation. If you don't like anything that's being said, uh, there's a little button at the bottom that says leave. It's on the bottom right um, because this is just something you get to be privy to and you also get to be privy to find the door if you don't like it. Um, but we are happy you're here. The other I thing can't, is- I can't see the button. Oh, it's if you have to move your uh, your mouse or something, and then you'll okay. see it. Um, <laughs> and by the way, that's a great note, Sensei. Thank you, because if anybody's not sure where the chat button is, you'd have to probably move your mouse on the screen, and that as well will let you see the chat button where you can ask <clears throat> questions. Not all the questions will get through, and we do know from last week, sometimes the guest just gets going in a way that's so interesting, but we always do our best to get your questions uh, to our guests. So definitely ask them early, uh, because we have so many questions and just <clears throat> things we want to talk about ourselves. Um, Sensei Sloki, it's such a pleasure. Um, I just want to jump right into something we were talking about on the pre-show, which is, you know, you mentioned that a lot of times your history gets written and with the kind of accolades you've achieved, yeah, a lot of people are going to write what they think was your path. So one thing we love to ask all our guests, why don't you tell us what your path was into your first dojo, if it was judo at age six, um, and, and what that experience was for you as a young kid? Well, um, now that I've heard all this, but thank you very much for the intro. That was fantastic. You guys have to be on television or on <laughs> in the movies, you know, uh, you've got it down. Working uh, on it. Working just, on uh, it. you know, I, I, I see uh, a marketing guy. Who's the marketing guy, by the way? Who's the Robert. sales guy? Who's the sales guy? Who's the, Sweeno's you know, got some of that too. You know, I'm going to be I'm honest. Just, He's really <laughs> yeah. great at that behind the yeah. scenes. Yeah, it, it, to me, it's just like going into a tournament is you got to qualify and have a look at who the people are first before you you do anything, you know, um, have a look. Uh, uh, there's a couple of things that were uh, uh, mentioned and uh, thank you very much again. And uh, I do have a, a lot of fond memories uh, with uh, Gary and uh, uh, his uh, uh, journey uh, through the martial arts. Um, Fighting, I, uh, I didn't start off uh, teaching anybody to fight. That was the furthest thing from my mind. Um, when I started teaching, and that was in, uh, uh, in Toronto, um, in the 50s and uh, going into the 60s, it, uh, um, Toronto was uh, a different place, different time. Um, uh, media uh, was different back then. Uh, um, uh, People were uh, different, uh, uh, but uh, from Toronto, we moved to Brampton, uh, the family moved to Brampton, and um, I started teaching in 1966 uh, and competing, uh, well, com before 1966 and traveling, but uh, as a school and uh, uh, back in Brampton in 1966, the school was called uh, school of self-defense period so um, um, that's how the whole thing started uh, but it wasn't about fighting uh, I mean I had uh, 
kids coming in. I had uh, adults coming in. I had business people. And uh, basically what they wanted to do is um, learn how to take care of themselves, um, uh, get into shape, get rid of a lot of frustration, inhibitions that people build up even today. Um, and, uh, but fighting, that was the, the furthest thing uh, in my mind to take a, per oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I should have. <laughs> Oh man, that's, that's a hell of a ringtone! Wow. Yeah. Hello. Are, are you calling Hello? Census Loki? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Who's this? Rick Joslin. Rick Joslin. Nice. Hey, Rick Joslin. You know All what? Right. I, I I was gonna say something about you nasty, but I can't. You know. Um, but I would never do that. Um. Well, one of your, your friends keeps on calling me and I, I keep on saying to them that they're not my friend and they're not your friend. What do you think? I think you're pretty well on the ball. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, Rick, I'm just doing a, um, uh, a Zoom thing here and uh, apparently you were on uh, the show one time and I've got Randy Dolphin, I got Gary Legacy, yeah. I got Nicholas Sweeno, and I got Sean Benson and a whole yeah. bunch of other people. And uh, right now, uh, this is Rick Jawson, one of the uh, greatest fighters that came out of Hamilton uh, in the whole area there. His son's in the MMA, uh, full, uh, you know, just doing a beautiful job. Uh, but uh, Rick's the man in Hamilton. So say hi to Rick. Uh, Rick, say hi to the guys. And then I'm going to tell you to get, get off the goddamn forward, okay? Hold on. Say hi. Hey, Rick. Hey, How's it going? There you go. Hey, Sensei Jocelyn. Hi, Sensei Jocelyn. Hi, nice to see you. Cheers. Yeah. Rick, thank you. Uh, let me talk to you later. Uh, yeah. And or, and I'll, uh, I'll sing you a lullaby later on, okay? Okay, bye. Uh, okay, <laughs> thanks, Rick. That's thanks. awesome. Bye. We had a bye. great interview with him. So, Sensei Sloki, can I back yep. you up a sec? Sure. Can we go to you walking into that judo <laughs> dojo, then the kung fu, then the karate prior to your teaching? Can you yeah, talk a little bit about I mean, what, what got you to the sure. place where you're offering that thing? Well, you know. uh, I didn't walk in. I was pulled in. Yeah. And uh, as a kid, um, nobody knew what judo was. Nobody knew what karate was. It was, uh, I guess, called wrestling back then, you know. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but um, a little different to, um, and that's why I was uh, asking uh, Nicholas earlier about the, the judo. Uh, what I remember as a child and uh, even uh, as a young adult is uh, when we were doing, uh, I guess uh, back then they used to call it randori, you know, just playing around, you know, trying to get uh, your rhythm, your, uh, you know. Um, do you remember any of the katas that you uh, uh, were taught at the beginning? Judo katas? Yes. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, we still, we still practice that stuff. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm glad because, you know, over the years, I've tried to uh, backtrack a lot of the old guys uh, to see if anybody remembers any of the katas. And there was three forms, and um, I got two of them down, but the third one is lost, you know? So that, uh, I'm still trying to um, get back to it. But um, as a kid, uh, um, uh, I don't know about your time, but... Uh, uh, I got into trouble. Everybody got into trouble mm. back then, you know, and uh, kids uh, will be kids. Um, even now, um, you got to let them go and let them get into trouble. And uh, if uh, they need your help, you just tell them to call. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, nothing's changed from uh, 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 too much from the judo back then to, I, I think, the judo now, other than uh, it's... Um, uh, very passive, I would say, nowadays, as opposed to what it used to be back then. So I don't know if Nick, uh, if you agree with me or not, but, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I take a look at some of the kids that do groundwork now. Um, uh, they don't know how to stand and how to throw. They don't know how to break balance. They don't know how to... Um, it, it's just to me it's um, when you guys were talking about fighting um, I've always uh, said to a person uh, coming in you got to learn standing 
you got to learn your grappling and you got to learn ground. So when I say standing, I, I mean your hands um, and your legs running if you have to. Uh, grappling is, you know, everybody wrestles in tight and then bang once you're thrown. And if you're thrown properly, uh, uh, I, in my opinion, I think that should be it. Uh, the end of story, you know. So, uh, I mean, uh, even break falls. Now I take a look at some of the guys uh, uh, being taught uh, break falls. Uh, uh, in my opinion, again, uh, I think uh, they need to work on that a little bit more. But, uh, uh, you know, a break fall, if you do a break fall on uh, a cement, uh, you, it's not going to be the same as on a tatami, you know. And, but the tatamis back then was a little different. We didn't have tatamis like you guys have now, you know, the nice foam and stuff like that. It was uh, just a uh, tarp and uh, usually a lot of uh, cloth either stuffed underneath or horse hair, you know, like I remember Frank, uh, uh, Frank's place, horse hair underneath, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the tatami would be in waves and you'd have to clean it up yourself, you know, we'd get down there and, you know, it's kids. But the nice part is uh, um, there was a few kids, um, uh, uh, Mr. Hatashira, um, uh, there was a bond that was made uh, with my dad um they uh, uh he would come out and teach sometimes but sometimes they'd be in the office and um they would have a little drink and just let everybody train you know so sensei Suino, any thoughts um, on that what the else way, do you talking about with those different eras the 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 then and the now well sensei i'm really interested in that so um yeah. when you studied when you started doing judo with with yeah. uh Tashita sensei um was it a was it a um uh more self-defense oriented, like fighting oriented judo, even as a kid? Like what was the philosophy and outlook in the club? No, 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 no. There was no, no fighting. It was, mm -hmm. um, uh, everybody was there having fun. You know, there mm -hmm. was a lot of business people. There was a lot of street people. Um, uh, there was, uh, um, back then, I don't remember any young ladies being involved back then, you know, but um, um, kids, not that many. Adults, yes, um, but uh, fighting, the fighting was uh, when I got a little older, 11, 12, 13, 14, that's where the fighting, uh, you know, uh, you got into trouble. But back then fighting, that wasn't uh, the gist of the whole thing, you know. But again, uh, nobody knew what judo was, you know. Um, everybody thought it was, you know, a judo chop, you know, uh, from, uh, I guess the movies or, yeah. you know, uh, but back then everybody wanted to be a cowboy or everybody wanted to be a, um, uh, a guy in the, the army, you know, because you used to go to the uh, films, the shows, and uh, they'd come up with uh, all these things, you know, and the, the only time that uh, really, um, I think a person would, uh, uh, and nobody understood what judo was, is when you had these guys uh, being thrown, uh, you know, with the bayonets and, you know, running through the uh, uh, training, you know, um, World War One, World War, that, you know, so. So people, let me interject there, if I may. Um, what, what then pivoted you over to wanting to do, oh, I think we've gone digital. Is that just me or is that everybody? I, I can hear you. Can you hear Sensei? Uh, you sound fine, Sean. Oh, there we go. I had Sensei there? Sloki digital for a sec, so I don't know if that was me. Sensei Sloki, um, I'm sorry I lost okay. you for a sec digitally, so yep. I'm interrupting, pardon me, but what pivoted I'm, I'm you then from the, from the judo to the kung fu and ultimately uh, Sensei Soroka's karate? We were, um, as kids, we were roaming all over the place. And again, you know, uh, when you're young, um, you've always got somebody watching you. Uh, it's... Uh, you know, you start playing in your front lawn and then next thing you know, you go to the corner. Next thing you know, you're around the block and next thing you know, you're 10 blocks away, you know, from the house. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you have to explore, I guess. But uh, as kids, as uh, uh, I got older and some of uh, the guys that I used to chum around with, we would explore, go look. Um, um, I remember uh, some of the, Chinese places, uh, they would have the windows all covered and you'd have a little hole and you'd be peeking in and next thing you know, you're inside. Uh, 
but uh, it wasn't Paul Chan. It was uh, a fellow by, see a lot of people, uh, they talk about Paul Chan and uh, things. There's uh, a fellow by the name of Jimmy Lore um, was uh, uh, there uh, I guess, almost at the same time that uh, Paul Chan was uh, in the uh, Chinese aspect of it. But uh, uh, those two, uh, I mean, there was a lot of Chinese around, uh, 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 what, I guess what people call gung fu, gung fu, gung fu, you know, um, uh, in uh, all, all over. Uh, back in the early 60s and 50s, you know, so. And then what brought you then from there to uh, Sensei Soroka's karate? Because that's something obviously that then feathers down to us. So we've got some specific interest in that one. It, and again, as a kid, you know, you just uh, go and you uh, explore and you, um, um, you know, somebody says, hey, now you got karate. Well, what's karate? Well, okay, let's go. Um, when you're talking about that, I just... Um, um, uh, found some pictures and I was talking to a few people um, uh, Don uh, uh, Mullins Skipper Mullins's uh, 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 brother last night we were up until about 2 2 30 in the morning we're talking about a lot of different things but um, uh, I found a whole bunch of uh, old pictures and a lot of things that brought back a lot of memories and then um, I, I opened up uh, things uh, in the past little while that I hadn't even touched, uh, like when my mo uh, my mother passed away, um, I, I just went through her stuff, a box of her stuff. But uh, 1963, I found pictures from um, the tournament that was held here in Toronto, um, uh, Soroka's, uh, one of Soroka's tournament uh, from 1963. So, um, and... Uh, then what I did is with all the pictures that I found and uh, some really classy, nice, nice shots, um, I phoned uh, uh, Sensei Hagashi. Um, as a matter of fact, we talked to get this morning uh, about a few things, but uh, I mentioned to him some of the things that I have, and I'm going to pass it on to him. But uh, 1963 is when um, Shane Hagashi got his black belt. So... Uh, um, I was at uh, the tournament watching, uh, sitting in the stands uh, uh, with the guys. And it's interesting, too, because in the picture that I also have, 1963, there's people that uh, I ended up training with uh, in the latter part of the 60s and the 70s. Um, there was uh, Jim McLean was in the, the picture. Uh, Phil Keppel was in the picture uh, in 1963 here in Toronto that I have. Mm -hmm. Um, there was also a, a fellow by the name of John Keenan uh, in that photo as well. Um, but uh, that's, uh, again, 63. So these and are guys you didn't know at the time, but then later when you competed with them, you just put the, you put it together through that photo. Well, yeah, yes. And, uh, you know, really cool. uh, and again, this is things that I'm starting to find now, you know. And uh, so there's a lot of things that, uh, and it starts jogging memories, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, once you start seeing these photos and then you start uh, um, putting things together, that's like uh, this. Uh, well, I'll clean this photo up, Randy, and um, you, you'll see that that is you. And there's a couple of other people in this photo at uh, the tournament. But um, like uh, I, I know that you um, uh, uh, shave right now the head uh, because of uh, not uh, you don't like to comb your hair at uh, you know like you used to and stuff like that so it just uh, eliminates that time uh, you know but uh, you got uh, your hair you had a beard there okay are you thinking yeah. of him as the ref is that yes 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 either that or uh, my eyes are going off I took the magnifying glass and but anyways I'll well I'll pass it on to you. If it's not you, I'm sorry, you know. But, Sensei, uh, we'd love to see yeah. all those photos. And by the way, I do I do just want to say I'm sorry about your mother. Yeah. I went through that myself not too long ago. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. No, my mother passed bad. away uh, uh, a few years back, but oh, okay. uh, uh, my brother passed away last year, or a year and a half ago. So, but there's things that I still haven't uh, touched or, uh, you know, so. Right. Um, but um, I'm just going through. But uh, anyways, getting back to... Uh, the 1963, so I shared that with uh, 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 Sensei, uh, or the proper thing to say, I guess, is Hagashi Sensei. 
-hmm. instead of sensei agashi but you know um am i correct in saying that nick uh this the order of the yes the order of the words? Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah typically in the japanese word order the sensei comes yeah. last yeah 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 i i, I keep on uh, hearing that uh, the japanese they're having a war against the okinawans now right? who's uh uh, who came first? Who came second? And oh, geez. Also, but anyways, it uh, so the picture, yeah, it uh, um, so that uh, uh, you know the history goes back to then because um, um, in uh, uh, the early years uh, 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 there was uh, the breakoffs uh, from certain people um, from um, uh, Soroka, mm -hmm. and uh, well, I mean we can get into because I talked to. Uh, 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 Higashi sensei about a few things of why the breakup with the Chitoru and I know the history and why uh, you know uh, uh, different factions going different directions and so um, uh, you know sharing that with them but uh, so uh, then uh, with uh, uh, Benny um, uh, with him uh, uh, from uh, the 60s 62 63 64 and um, as a matter of fact, uh, that was uh, Rick Joslin. I sent him a picture. Um, uh, 1964, I'm in uh, uh, Hamilton at uh, the plaza there doing a demonstration in 1964. So um, the guys in uh, Hamilton um, in the 60s, uh, 64, 65, 66, are the ones that uh, I um, uh, taught. Mm -hmm. uh, because Benny only would go down every so often. There was um, uh, Frank Wishart. There was uh, Ray Greenway. Um, they, the people are bringing up uh, a fellow's name by the name of Billy Melbourne. Um, Billy was not a uh, uh, black belt at that time. And he didn't receive as, uh, same as, uh, um, do you remember Frankie DeLorenzo, Gary? I yeah. do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, Frankie... Uh, De Lorenzo was just, uh, uh, well, was he training back then? No, I don't think so. Not in 63, 64. No, he wasn't. Uh, so most of the guys that uh, um, I used to go down and just to work and the katas, that's basically what I uh, um, helped with was uh, uh, going through the katas and teaching the basics, uh, making sure that uh, the stances, uh, you know, and uh, other things were there. So, uh, yeah, okay. Frankie De Lorenzo, uh, uh, he was uh, a part of the uh, uh, Eastern group. Um, and uh, Frankie uh, got, uh, went down to um, Toronto um, uh, when he was, uh, and he got his black belt in 1970. Um, and in 1970, he was uh, 12 years old when he received his black belt. So uh, that's why- I just. Yeah, yeah, if I just chip in on a, a question sure. about the basics, because, yeah. you know, we always do research on our subjects and I love watching your fights, but actually one of my favorite videos of yours is demonstrating your basics in a demo. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that because Hanshi Legacy uh, trained and fought next to you and, and learned so much from you that he's imparted, but there are some similarities, but I want to ask you this. Did you know out of the gate that you were going to be able to move the way you could move? Was this a sort of white belt up thing? Or is this something where you went, okay, I'm flexible, but did you then break down the basics for yourself or did your teacher do it with you in a way that, to be honest, made you a phenom? Because watching you deliver those kicks especially, but your hands as well, the, the oh, delivery um, is just incredible. I, uh, it's something you, yeah. you were gifted with you. or worked extra yeah. hard at. No, thank you for that. that yeah. uh, um, it's a joy I'm, to watch. I'm glad we're uh, talking about uh, technique. Uh, you know, um, everybody's talking about fighting. I don't know uh, how that label was put onto me. Yeah, I used to compete <laughs> into a lot of tournaments. <laughs> no, no, it's true. You know, but people forget that uh, I, I won a lot of tournaments and uh, competed all over, uh, not only here in uh, Canada, uh, but, uh, you know, overseas in North America, you know, to, uh, um, uh, but um, basics to me, and uh, let me tell you a story. Uh, um, I was just talking to somebody the other day, and uh, um, do you remember when the snow used to be up to here and used to walk through the snow to get to school? That, yep. 
And, and I'm just, he goes, yep, you know, nobody wants to hear that. Come on, you know, the kid, I, I used to say that to my daughter, get up, get to school. I used to walk through the snow and the snow was up to, uh, you know what? Um, but um, when I was a, a youngster, you know, back, uh, movies used to cost a nickel, and then they went up to a dime. Um, uh, but I used to sit there and watch, and then I used to go, I see it. And I, I used to watch the, uh, uh, the films going, and it, I see it. And my, my friends and my buddies used to say, what, what do you see? What do you see? I don't know whether it's me or my eyes. And it's the same thing that when I look at somebody throwing a punch or I look at somebody doing a kata or I look at somebody um, doing something, you know, it's like uh, um, you're, you're playing and uh, what's that thing called? Uh, uh, Nicholas, you got to help me out with the leg. Uh, Taitoshi, leg, leg thing? Mm, Taitoshi is a throw in judo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys are better in terminology than me, you know. Uh, so I just, uh, uh, you know, uh, but anyways, yeah, it's, uh, when I look at something and I, I sort of, um, and that's the same thing as in the movies. And then later on in life, uh, somebody said, you know what you're seeing? And I said, what's that? He said, subliminal advertising. And I said, what do you mean subliminal advertising? He said, well, they used to splice in, uh, frames, um, into, uh, when you're watching, uh, the, the movies. Yes of people, you know, eating popcorn or hot, uh, you know, drinking a drink. And every so often people would stand up in the movies and go get a drink or, and nobody could figure out why, you know? And this went on for years and years. And it was uh, uh, that word stuck in my head, subliminal uh, marketing, advertising or whatever. But um, to answer your question, Randy, I, I, my eyes, I, I don't know what it is. I look at something and I try and break it down. I say, you know what? Mechanically, I don't know. Does it? Maybe. Will it? You know. Um, and um, I, I did work hard uh, at uh, trying to improve my technique, my form. Um, you know, in nineteen uh, in the sixties, nineteen sixty six, I took a, a trip uh, through Europe. Uh, well, through uh, that was later, but uh, through the U.S. and. Uh, um, I saw a lot of things and I met a lot of people um, uh, back then. Um, uh, and I, I, I just looked and I, I saw and I, I, I talked and I, so you pick up things and, uh, you know, uh, you take it and move on forward, you know. So it sounds like that would have worked both in learning the basics in a way that was really, you know, from what you were being taught, but also in a way that you could pick up what somebody was coming at you with. Yeah, but see, the basics back then were taught as um, um, an exercise. That's number one. Right. And uh, number two is, um, um, and I'm going to bounce back and forth. Uh, Nick is interested in the judo aspect of it. And some of you guys are interested in the, uh, uh, the karate aspect of it. And then there's other guys that want to know about the kickboxing aspect of it. Um, uh, what... Um, uh, I found for myself is that uh, um, nowadays, you know, you, you get people that are teaching blocks and um, uh, a block to me, uh, you work it as an isometric, uh, uh, an exercise, you know, so uh, you can use it as a, a block, you can use it as a, uh, a strike, you can use it all uh, sorts of uh, different ways, uh, but um, um, I I, I just look at things now and I, uh, uh, in the Chinese uh, aspect of it, and I, you know, people still call me and they say, do you remember? And I go, do one, two things. And they go, and I go, got it. Now, is this how the next one goes? Uh, it was uh, one of the guys uh, was talking about kata the other day about shiohai for uh, what uh, used to do four corners. Um, and uh, so I, I was out in a parking lot uh, about uh, three week a month ago, but uh, with a friend, and I said, "Hey, uh, I just remembered this kata. Uh, let me show it to you. You know, tape it." And it was shiohai, you know. So uh, just about a week ago, they, they put it out there, and everybody was asking about shiohai, you know. And then there was another kata called nisei shou, you know. 
Um, then there's a, a kata, it's called the, uh, the tiger and a crane. So um, like the guys uh, uh, the, in the 60s, the guys like from London that uh, uh, were uh, just youngsters and I used to teach them uh, a lot of things, uh, uh, basics, uh, you know, how to do this, how to do that. And the katas as well, uh, the Chinese form. Um, what they, uh, and I had uh, the opportunity to travel and, uh, to experience uh, uh, different uh, systems, different styles, like the Ishinru, uh, Chitoru uh, with the uh, CH, Shito with the SH, mm -hmm. uh, Goju, but there was all kinds of different Gojus, you know, um, Ishinru, uh, just, uh, uh, you know, you, you learn, you know, you learn, you spend time, you learn. Um, I spent time with a lot of people uh, sleeping on their floors, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, trying to, well, we talked about this the other day, to sometimes trying to pool money together so that we could eat and the family could eat, you know. Back then, it was, uh, as a Canadian, it was pretty tough um, running through the States. And, uh, you know, I remember um, in the 60s going to Spain and uh, I, uh, I, I, bought, I even bought a uh, property there and I built a, a place in uh, Spain I was going to live there but I traveled from Spain over to uh, the Canary Islands over to Morocco uh, got myself into a lot of trouble going through the different places there but you know and teaching teaching mm. uh, going through Europe and teaching meeting a lot of guys uh, you know uh, good judo guys good and I'll tell you training on the beach uh, great uh, uh tatamis uh, on the beach uh, on the sand you know that just it's better sounds, than cement uh, you know sounds totally glorious as a way to pop through the 60s through europe sensei dofan you you want to chip in yeah the one thing uh i was thinking about is why we sensei sloki says about uh people keying in on him being a fighter um well in our dojo that's because sensei legacy made it really clear that uh at one time in london uh, in the beginning of his martial arts career, he found himself standing in front of Sensus Loki one minute and then the next minute receiving a sidekick and landing about two or three rows uh, back when he had that fight with Sensei Loki. And, uh, you know, we all watch the videos, uh, Sensus Loki. We all watch. You, you know it. what? I'm glad you're bringing that up. There's a lot of people that are coming out with a lot of videos and a lot of tapes. Why are they hiding the ones that I'm in? And they only showed themselves, hey? Eh? What is it? An ego thing? What is wrong with these people? Hey, nobody wants know. to look bad. <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants to look bad, right? You know what? I'll tell you. But uh, going back to the uh, 60s, I mean, there was a lot of good people out there. But you have to remember, you, you know, you had the Shotokan. Uh, you had the uh, different uh, uh, JK tournaments. And uh, uh, back in the... Um, uh, 60s and 70s you had the the groups you know it uh, um, uh, you had uh, organizations you had uh, uh, the uh, WACO, WUCO, uh, JKA, MKA J all of these different organizations that uh, were started and uh, I guess some are still around and um, uh, tournaments tournaments uh, all tournaments I um, just uh, knew that uh, uh, making sure that a person uh, was taught properly was uh, what I was interested in. Um, back uh, and again in the 60s, moving out to Brampton, um, you got to remember Brampton, Toronto was one thing. And I mean, Toronto was rough and tough, you know, as uh, uh, for kids uh, uh, and, uh, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, 17. Brampton, same thing. Um, uh, see? No respect. Gary, where are you going? <laughs> no, he's got to take a fee. But uh, you I'm know, here, uh, sir. Okay. You know, back in, um, um, when I opened up in um, uh, Brampton, um, you know, you had these guys there. And I, my weight, and I've always been a lightweight. I've been 155, 165 max. And I mean, Max, that's what I used to fight with that uh, in the beginning, compete at, at the beginning. And back in the 60s is uh, they used to line up the guys. And it reminds me of the judo days. Uh, it didn't matter what size, you know, mm. 
but then size became an important thing, you know? Technique went out the window and everybody was using force now, you know? But that's how it was at the beginning. So you had all these guys that were huge, you know? Um, so how do you um, de-escalate? How do you uh, engage? How do you, how do you disengage? Um, so um, having uh, uh, Brampton, the, the school there, uh, my brother was involved in um, uh, Toronto in uh, 1966. We were living in uh, Brampton and he had a job in Toronto as a lifeguard. So um, he would travel back and forth and I would be teaching and we'd be exchanging um, because there's another thing. Yeah, one of the guys wrote a book and he said that my, my brother was a student of, uh, you know, and uh, that got me a little upset uh, because... Uh, my brother trained in Brampton, started in uh, training in Brampton with me. Um, he uh, uh, got it and uh, I have the newspaper articles um, and somebody took another little shot saying, um, take your, um, how did he say it? Photo album and put it away. And I, I you know, that uh, was a cheap shot, you know, like saying, well, I've got photo albums. Well, no, these are things that people are sending me um, uh, uh, over the years, um, you know, that uh, happened uh, in, um, uh, in Brampton, in Toronto, overseas. I got this here. Uh, one of the people sent this to me. And this is back in from Brampton again, this here. And um, these kids are from... Um, they're Eskimo kids. And what we did is I, I set up this program at one of the schools to um, uh, get some money for these kids to come in from um, um, the, uh, 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 like this place, Cape Dorsey, Northwest Territories. And uh, we, for, we got enough money for the kids to come in. And uh, this is in, in the 70s, early, early 70s. And uh, some of these kids, wrote me a letter, which I found in my, the box that was in my mother there. And I'm gonna try and get a hold of these kids at this time because um, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, mm -hmm. but they signed it in English and they also signed it in their, uh, I guess, um, uh, native uh, languages, you know? Um, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I mean, I, I thought this was beautiful when I found it. And I said, man, I got to get a hold of these kids and to see how their trip uh, was. You know, they say here is uh, uh, demonstrating the skills, uh, uh, you know, in karate. For many of us, it was a highlight for the trip south and an experience that none of us will ever forget. Because I picked up something from these kids. They were showing me some of the things that they do. And they used to hang... Um, uh, the, from uh, uh, leather um, and uh, they used to put a ball down at the end and they used to try and kick as yep. high as you know they jump up for standing yep. up and try and kick it I thought that was fantastic I said wow what a way to train you know uh, and uh, you know some of these kids were damn good doing what they were doing you know yeah they could have uh, done uh, some of my demonstrations back then, you know? Sensei, but, um, yes. I, I want to pick up on a word you used a bit ago. And by the way, one thing I'm really enjoying about chatting with you is, and if I may, is you have such a wistful joy for, you know, even showing us that photo. And when you're talking about this time, it's, it's really nice. I, there's such, honestly, there's a sensitivity around the way you're discussing these things that I really connect with. And I think it's lovely and I can see it in you and, and maybe I'm mistaken, but I, I, I connect with it very much. Um, but you use the word engage. And uh, I just want to pivot to one of our questions from Sensei Conroy Copeland, who said, hello, Sensei, great to see you. Can you share what your attitude was when facing an opponent back in the day? I remember when you coached me, you would say, watch out for this, watch out for that. So if you can share what your own attitude was when you're facing these top people in the world. You know, um, uh, Conroy Copeland was um, uh, a really good, good, solid competitor. Um, I, I, I don't know what, to, ask Conroy to uh, ask him what, what year he started because uh, uh, Conroy, I think when I was coaching or teaching, uh, he was in the latter part of the thing. Uh, but uh, I think Conroy's in the um, late 70s, I believe, or uh, 80s. Um, 
He'll yeah, message fire, in a second. He'll, yeah, he'll message fire back through oh, okay. to us. All right. But yeah, um, well, you're talking about engaging and disengaging. Yeah, and that when was, you're engaging that a, opponent. Yeah, a great question. It's, uh, and again, getting back to fighting. Um, I used to teach guys how to disengage and how to engage. But um, one of the things is that um, um, I used to teach the guys in the bars back in the 60s, in the 66, 67, 68, 69, how to disengage, how to get a person out of there without causing any issues, out the door, close the door, don't let them back in, you know? <laughs> but uh, at that time, um, you, you weren't engaging with one person. You would have sometimes four, five, six, seven, eight people, either by yourself or one other person. So what, you know, the, the karate, the, uh, uh, what you're taught in the um, schools, you know, this, that's not gonna work in a bar. You know, it's how do you take a person? How do you turn them? How do you move them? How do you uh, play with them? How do you uh, use one person against another person? You know, so those are, are things that not only did I teach the students back then, but also um, the guys that were competing in a tournament. Mm -hmm. So tournaments to me, um, it's like, um, um, Nick, me and you, uh, 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 you're pretty good at judo, right? Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah. okay. So Nick, yes, yes, me, yes. you know, when, when, this, when this COVID thing is finished, I'd love to work out with you, just judo. Oh, I'd love that. That would, uh, yeah. that would be amazing. But you know what? I think, uh, you, uh, and I'm sorry to say this, but... Um, if I throw you, I'm not going to play with you. I'm going to try and hurt you. You know. <laughs> well, then maybe we'll maybe we'll uh, talk about this a little more first. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no talking about it. That's what I'm going to do. So, <laughs> okay, well, see, this is, this is see, this is what I'm doing right now. Is <laughs> I'm playing with him, and that's what I used to tell the guys. I'd say, you know what? You go to a tournament. Most of the guys are sitting there. And they're off to the side and they're all throwing kicks and boom, boom, boom. And I used to tell the guys, come here, sit down, just watch. See that guy? Who do you have to worry about here? Who's, who's the guy that you have to worry about? Oh, him? Why? Okay, let's see what he's doing. So he'd be practicing what he was going to use in the tournament, you know, round kick, reverse punch or whatever, you know, you get his timing. But then when you get a person upset, get them pissed off, like I was trying to get Nick uh, there upset. Once a person gets upset, angry, they don't think properly. So uh, there's things that you do um, to take the advantage, uh, I think, mentally, you know. So uh, and I've always said uh, the things that uh, really get a person um, and uh, for controlling a person really is uh, uh, it, it's ego. It's greed. And it's anger. There's four things. And I sold, uh, I used to tell this to guys years uh, back. Uh, there's a lot of things that I used to say and used to do that have been put in books. Hey, I, I, I thank you very much for um, uh, putting those things in the books. Um, I'm not talking about uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Legacy there. I'm talking about some of the other guys, you know, how to throw a kick how to do this, but do me a favor, give me credit for it, you know, uh, but so ego, you know, get a person, um, hey, you know what, you got beautiful kicks, fantastic, let me show me, how fast is it, wow, that's fantastic, <laughs> wow, so you get the timing, oh, that punch, oh, hey, <laughs> distance, you know, so ego, you know, greed, uh, you know, everybody wants to win. So, uh, hey, please don't hit me too hard. Please. Okay. Um, you know what? Oh, man, my shoulder's so damn sore right now. I can't throw this punch. I don't know. What am I going to do? You play with the people. So with uh, Conroy, he had long, long hands. So when I look at somebody, I measure them right away. You know, so my eyes go big, bing, 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 bing. And I go, hmm, gotcha. 
How long is his hands? Okay. Do I stay outside or do I get inside? You know? So um, if I play outside, then he's got to chase me. See, a lot of people um, didn't, uh, uh, to me, I would rather learn how to go backwards first rather than forward. So, um, you know, let the person chase you. But getting back to Conra, long, long hands. And I do remember coaching um, him at uh, one of the tournaments. And he actually just wrote be, his back and yeah. say, a World yeah. Karate Championship late 80s. World Karate Championship late 80s. Um, that was in Hamilton. I remember was, it in Hamilton. That's the uh, very first time I okay. ever. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the first time I ever saw you, Sensei Sloki, because yeah. I was up in the stands with Sensei Legacy, and he yeah. said, hey, Randy, there goes Sensei Sloki walking across the floor. Look yeah. how he moves different than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> you know what? I, I have this walk. You know, I drag one leg. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, it... Uh, yeah, but uh, with uh, Conroy, um, um, no, there was another time with Conroy, and I think it was um, before that, and that was in um, Bermuda, if I'm not mistaken. And um, uh, there was a friend of mine from New York City. His name was, um, oh, man, here we go. Um, Bermuda, the fellow that used to have... Um, the tournaments in Bermuda, uh, him Ingram, Skipper Ingram. Um, Skipper was uh, New York City. Um, he, uh, the very first time that I took uh, the guys down to New York, not everybody, just uh, I took um, Benny Allen, uh, Bill Hines and uh, um, Teddy Martin and a couple of other people to one of the New York tournaments. And I think I won that one there. Um, the New York Open or something, but uh, the other guys, uh, that was their first taste of New York City and how things work in New York and the tournaments. And, uh, uh, you know, I introduced them to different people. Um, then I took, um, uh, what's his name, Donnie, um, uh, down to New York uh, uh, la later on, uh, in, I believe in 70, 73, 74. But getting back to the world, uh, tournament uh, uh, and Conroy, long hands, uh, good legs. Um, uh, and uh, if uh, probably at uh, um, the, the tournament in Bermuda, um, uh, what I was trying to coach him with is uh, because the uh, team from um, Brazil um, was there and uh, I was watching the guys work out uh, in a corner and I noticed a few things and I said, do you know what a tate is? And he says, no. And I said, a tate, you know, tate. Um, and see, again, Japanese terminology. Um, my focus was at the beginning is to uh, put a program together, which I did um, in, the, uh, in Brampton in the early 70s, uh, and to do a reversal on the Japanese. That was my goal right from the beginning. Uh, but it uh, didn't work out. But uh, so I wanted to teach everything in English, no Japanese, you know? So, but um, a tate, uh, you guys know what a tate, vertical punch is, right? So, uh, uh, and I worked that with them, uh, you know, in timing and I, you know, to throw it and uh, run, you know, because what the guys were using, they were wide, wide open for it. But, uh, uh, you know, some people you can coach and explain, and there's other people that, uh, um, hey, they know it. Uh, they're they're going to do whatever they want to do, and uh, you know, it's uh, the ones that like to listen. I, I think, uh, like myself, I listen sometimes. Sometimes I didn't. Right. <laughs> but the tournament, uh, the Wuko tournament, uh, um, that's another thing. Is um, there? There's a, a few things that uh, the times that uh, was brought up. See, Conroy. Uh, and some of the other people uh, started later on. Uh, so they really don't know the history of what happened in the 60s and the early 70s. Um, uh, who taught who, what was shown, what was done and everything else. So um, there's a lot of things that uh, 
a lot of people are dealing with now that, um, um, you know, they ask me and I tell them the truth. Uh, that's one thing that I don't uh, like is, uh, you know, that people teach Budo and they teach the, the way, the art and, you know, um, you know, here's the Ten Commandments. And uh, meanwhile, all eight or nine of them, uh, in not all cases, but in uh, you know, some cases are broken, you know. Mm. Uh, don't lie to your students. But uh, no, Conroy um, was a good, good scrapper. A lot of uh, instructors back in the uh, 60s and 70s, they had uh, issues with uh, students. And uh, sometimes you even get them now. Is, um, it's like kids. Um, they reach a certain point and they try and test you. You know, they mm -hmm. test you uh, uh, in many ways, you know, the, for them to go out or to do something that they're, they're, they're always testing. And same as with students. And uh, over the years, uh, uh, I've seen it with uh, other students, other people where, um, you know, uh, the student gets a little cocky and he's always trying to test, you know, either the, the, the instructor or the other students. And, you know, uh, it's just human nature. And uh, some of the guys used to call and say, um, listen, I'm having a problem with this guy. Can you come down and help me out? And I go, well, what do you mean help you out? Well, you got to straighten them out. What do you mean you got to straighten them out? Why? You know, you would just talk to him, you know. Um, well, he's giving me a problem. Well, so get rid of him, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I used to do seminars and uh, uh, teaching and uh Always, always, you know, and that's, um, you know, when I'm asked to teach now, I, I, I really don't teach, you know, I don't, uh, I haven't taught uh, for a long time, except the uh, privates that I teach uh, now and some of the other people, um, because everybody just, uh, uh, they want to test, you know. So you get in there, you start teaching, and all of a sudden you say, okay, throw a kick. Next thing you know, the guy's trying to take your back out, you know? Um, it, it, not in all cases, but in some cases, you know? So it's always a uh, test, test, test. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, make sure that a person uh, turns out to be a complete uh, uh, person, not only uh, 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 being able to uh, take care of himself, but I'm talking about being physically fit mentally fit, you know, uh, you see a lot of people uh, when they get uh, depressed and there's a lot of people right now are getting de depressed and, uh, you know, they either uh, start drinking too much, they start uh, eating too much, they start, uh, you know, people cry, you know, their emotions come out and they don't know how to deal with that stress. Um, and I think it's important uh, that uh, certain things are taught. Uh, I think a lot of things that uh, the kids, one, one of the guys called me, uh, oh, it was a discussion that I had with uh, um, a, a few people. I'm not going to mention names. It, um, um, if you guys ever heard of, uh, uh, any of you guys are hunters? Yep. You got yeah. hunting? Yeah. yeah. Hunting? Okay. So, you know, it's in one of the movies. Have you ever seen Sergeant York? You know, where the guy explains how to uh, hunt uh, geese while they're flying. And he says to the guys, well, how would you do it? And the guy says, well, I take my gun and go bang, bang. They, no, no, no. They would scatter and you'd lose them all. He said, what you do is you take the last one, take them out as they're flying this way. Take the last one out, and then the next one, and then the next one. So they don't see the birds uh, dropping, right? Well, I remember going up north and... Uh, a friend of mine had a, uh, a place up there. And uh, what he would do is um, wild ducks, but he would drop corn on the ground. And, uh, you know, the ducks would come and get the corn. And then next he would uh, put a, a corn a little closer to the barn and a little closer, and then he'd have a trail. So then all of a sudden the ducks would follow the trail one by one. And then he'd get them in a barn, close the door, and he's got all the ducks. That's how people are, uh, in some cases, they like to follow, follow the leader without thinking, without looking, without listening, without, you know, so um, uh, hopefully, um, uh, you know, uh, teaching, when you're teaching someone, it's uh, like, uh, uh, ask me what my title is. Nick, what, what do you think my title is? 
title as a teacher? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, most guys are using sensei. Are you saying that you, you use something else? Yes. So I line the people up and I go, how are you? Welcome. My name's Wally Slokey. If you have any questions, I don't care what you call me. Any questions, you know, ask. All I want you to do is just listen. Listen and just ask. So if I tell you to kneel, ask why. If I tell you to close your eyes, ask why. If I tell you to bend over and kiss the floor, ask why. You know, it, um, to me, it's, um, uh, you know, everybody's saying, well, you got to read a lot of books, you know, and they're saying, um, uh, oh, well, there's a little comment that I heard, that I heard the other day is uh, rich people don't fight, you know, um, have I gotten into uh, a fight? Not in the past. Uh, I mean, verbal. I, I, I have uh, verbal <laughs> conversations with people. You know, somebody uh, tried to uh, start something with me because I'm lined up in uh, because of this COVID thing. Everybody's all uptight. So I'm standing there in line and a guy turns. He says, you're too close. So I start winking at him. <laughs> yeah. Every time you start winking at him. <laughs> so he starts moving away from me, you know? So, hey, um, uh, but uh, it, uh, people need to ask why and, um, uh, you know, why am I, uh, uh, Nick, do you punch? Uh, I've been known to. Uh, yeah. I, won't, I won't say I'm good at it, but I've yeah, done it. Go once like this, go like this with your head. Make a fist. Yeah, beautiful. Have you ever seen Gary's fist? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Have you seen his fist? You know, I, when he was a youngster and uh, he showed me, I said, why, what ever possessed you to do that? You know, but uh, that's how it was at the beginning, you know, so I didn't want to go that route, uh, you know, uh, getting, um, uh, uh, to me, it was, uh, again, teach how, what, where, when, what, you know? Um, um, and uh, since I, yes, mm -hmm. sorry, I do. I do want to interject with something because yep. um, a you're talking about questions and yep. that is uh, my pivot, which yep. is uh, how I'm going to ask you our 10 questions, because um, a it's a great pivot because the who, what, when, where, why is, what, the is the time over already. No, it's not. But I want to make Holy sure God. that your answers have time and also oh, okay. we have time to talk about your answers. Yep. Um, but I will tell you, time fucking flies on this show. Okay. So, um, 20 we love, minutes. yeah, we, uh, 20 minutes. we, we love impulsive responses and then, uh, elaborate as you need. So what is the most effective move in your martial arts arsenal? Um, you guys, um, right now, everybody is having a problem in, um, um, teaching, uh, in the sense that you can't see your students, so you do it on a Zoom situation right the, now. You know, I do have an answer for that. I do have an answer for a lot of things. Um, and I've asked a lot of people, um, do you need my help? Can I help you in any way? Can I come over and teach? Can I, can I help you? No, we're okay. We're good. I go, hey, okay. So um, when you ask me a question like that, I don't know if there's an answer for it, you know, sure. it, uh, it, uh, it's uh, out there. It, um, ask me again, a different way. Uh, a different way. All right. Um, physically, something's about to go down. What move do you rely on first, foremost, as often as possible? Something is going to go down. Well, um, when I was younger, um, the only time things would go down is when I was with my young lady friend. Uh -huh. And usually it would be the covers would be going down. Oh, this is a family thing. We're not supposed to talk it, about no, that. You, do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It, I, I, it's a question of something going down. I don't know what uh, is going down, you know? Well, uh, we what, can what leave is that it? one. We can well, leave that one. No, no, no. It ask me a dip. What is I'll it? Just somebody, ask the original somebody, question, and you can leave it. Somebody slapping go me it. in the back of the head. Is that uh, the question? No, it's that just you what's want? the most effective move in your arsenal, and then you get to figure out how you want to answer that. 
And if it most is someone effective. slapping you, then you can go from there. Oh, the most effective move in my arsenal? Yeah. Perfect. Thumbs up. You know, when I used to uh, dive, I used to go diving um, when I was younger. Um, uh, you know, instead of going, you know, the guys used to be underneath and they'd be in trouble that I'd go, uh, I, uh, and they'd go, you know, which meant let's get the hell out of here, you know, let's go up, you know. But uh, hey, to me, it uh, depends on what uh, situation you're talking, you know. It, uh, to me, I like to smile, you know, and, uh, that, I, I guess that's my best move, my arsenal, you know. What's um, the, who's the if most, you're talking um, about, uh, 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 when, I'm not talking fighting now. Remember that, you know, maybe uh, that was the question. It's how you like to take it. Um, yeah, so yeah. who's the most influential martial artist in your life? Um, all the guys that are out there right now, because all you guys are just champions doing what you're doing, you know. Um, I shouldn't say all, all right. There's, um, there's some good and then there's some bad uh, in there. But uh, in the most part, I, I would, uh, you know, with the good guys, you know, uh, the guys that, oh, the creators are the ones that I think, um, you know, it's the guys that, uh, um, and I, over the years, it's, uh, you know, um, Nick, you, I, I think uh, me and you are going to be best friends. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I like that response. <laughs> you know, go screw yourself. You're not my friend. Oh, you know? no. <laughs> and and or, no, no, you know what it is? It's I, I keep on hearing that over and over, you know, and I used to hear it before. And I still say you see the same thing going on now, you know, my friend. Meanwhile, be a, hey, that asshole, that I, you know, at, uh, at my friend, that asshole, you know. Um, so um uh, my friend, and uh, th there's two things that is bless you, God bless you. And I'm going, oh, come on, will you stop? Just, uh, you know, um, so anyways, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, who do you think is the most influential martial artist of all time and why? Uh, of all time, martial artists? Man, oh man, you know, uh, I keep on hearing all these stories of all these guys um, that are out there. Um, influential in what way of all time your call of all time huh. hmm. you know they used to ask me those questions who is the most in uh, that's how i used to get caught by these guys in uh, uh, that were um uh, creating you know um i i watch uh, um guys uh, before and they would say hey you got to see this guy man he's the, probably the best kicker that you've ever ever seen he's the best puncher that you've ever ever seen well they're creating something there um the mo the most uh, the martial artists hmm you know there was one kid um years back that um had um a, a couple of um I wouldn't say concerns or issues when he came in. Um, a, he, um, he had a disability, uh, so he could do things and he couldn't do other things. But um, this kid just gave it 110%, you know? Um, so um, do I put his name out right now? No, but uh, I, I think that one kid really just showed me um, what it was to work um, and overcome some of his obstacles, you know, and uh, in a real positive, positive way, you know. What excites you most about your next five years of martial arts? Uh, that uh, brings me to the point where everybody's, uh, you know, you guys got, and the martial arts people out there is uh, forget your egos uh, because I am the best. I am the legend, <laughs> you know, they, they say I'm still living, but uh, if you want to learn something, just give me a call. But uh, in the next five years, man, I'll tell you, tomorrow is another day. And when I wake up, um, uh, if I wake up tomorrow, man, I'm going to have a smile on my face, take a deep breath in. I'm going to say, you know what? 
I'm here today. Let's go. You know, so um, we, we talked about this uh, um, a year and a half ago, or uh, I uh, went through something. Uh, I, I ended up in a hospital. I had to get stents put in and I ended up um, uh, in, uh, with anaphylactic shock. In other words, I died and um, I came back to life again. So I was in intensive care um, um, uh, because of certain complications. But, you know, somebody asked me, did you see the lights? Did you see the, you know what? I did. I, I, it, it's strange, you know, I, I haven't talked about it, but there's certain things that I went through that, um, hey, you know, um, in my next five years, am, uh, am I afraid of anything? I don't think so, you know. Um, have I done... Um, a lot. Yes, I have. Have I got more to offer? 100%. And uh, I'll just be happy to be here tomorrow, like everybody else, you know, and with a smile. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. <laughs> Amen you know, to that. What, what are you doing? You know, it, uh, you know when you say that thing is, uh, uh, who's God? Oh, it's frozen, eh? Nope. We're, I just wasn't sure oh, if that was rhetorical. Sudden, I'm or not. sorry. I asked a question. Nobody was, everybody just went, boom. You know, that, I know hey, who God that, is to me. Went, hey, I that's the same thing. Time. That's the same thing as sparring. You know, uh, you'd spar and then all of a sudden you look the other way. And as he looks the other way, uh, when you point your fingers, bang, you hit him with a kick. You know, so, anyways, he freezes for a second. You know, I used to uh, tell the guys, if you want motion, jump up just for a second or, uh, you know, get your body to go this way and the eyes follow and, uh, you know, the brain works in different ways, but uh, advantage uh, that way. But yeah, who is God, by the way? I want to come back to that because we got uh, your questions to get to, but I'll happily talk about that with okay. you. Yeah. I'm your favorite film and TV martial artist. TV and film martial artist, man, there's been so many because um, I'll tell you, in the, uh, the early uh, 70s, two things happened. Um, uh, everybody wanted to be a movie star. So a lot of the guys from Canada, U.S., all over, went to California to become movie stars. Um, I was there in the 60s competing. Um, I was there in the 70s competing in L.A. and all over. Uh, they did ask me, and uh, I, uh, I went through... Um, yeah, they said, here, we'll take pictures. You're going to go through this. And I said, uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I, uh, I, you know, I said, not for me, you know. So um, I, I'm not an actor. I, uh, you know, movie stars in the martial arts. Is that the question? Yeah, your favorite film and TV martial artist. Oh, man. Um, hmm. I haven't seen too many of the films and, uh, you know, I mean, some of the guys, oh, there's, uh, what, what's the guy's name? Um, um, he was in The Matrix. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. This was you. my answer a few weeks there ago. Thank oh, you. And you know what? Not only in that, but see, there was, and, uh, um, you know, storylines are really uh, 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 not important if they are, but um, everything that's come out of, uh, Hollywood has already happened or will happen uh, with someone, you know, it's somebody's life. Yeah. You know, it's uh, years back, uh, there was a fellow by the name of uh, Bill De Clemente. They came down and to talk to me and he said, they stole it from me. And I said, what stole what? He said, they stole my name. They stole my, my life, my story. And I said, how'd they do that? Well, um, there was a fellow by the name of Pat Johnson um, that, um, uh, the first time I met Pat was in Niagara Falls in 1966 because Pat Johnson is fr was from Niagara Falls, the U.S. side. Um, but he went to L.A. and he did this thing called the, the Karate Kid, mm -hmm. uh, the movies, and he put together a, a whole thing. He said, over the years, I've uh, talked to Pat. As a matter of fact, uh, we went through rules uh, years back, uh, him and uh, uh, Chuck Merriman and... Uh, we, we sat down about rules, uh, you know, in tournaments and stuff because uh, the rules and tournaments and it was all over the place. But um, 
Bill De Clemente, they uh, he had they, he was from New York. That's why Nicholas, I was gonna you know um, um, talk to you about New York a little bit, uh, but uh, they took his story and that uh, movie, The Karate Kid, apparently was from his yeah. life. You know, so it's in California. It's interesting. You know, so um, if we who, start. Who, Who's the one martial artist living or dead that you wish you could train or fight with the most? Train with? Or, or spar, whatever, whatever that spar looks with. like for you. You know what? Honestly, uh, honestly, if I could clone myself, it would be me. You know why? And it's, this is not an ego thing. Uh, it, it really isn't. Is There's things that uh, I used to uh, teach, and a lot of the guys in the U.S., they started... Uh, uh, not mimicking, but teaching the same thing. I used to, uh, you know, a distance. So you're here, uh, one person's here, one person's here. Using your eyes to measure uh, by looking at a person, length of uh, their legs, their arms, uh, you know. So um, when I said earlier, outside or inside. So if I'm here and a person's throwing something, um, he has to come to me because we're outside, outside the range. And then all of a sudden, if I go in an inch, then what, what does it cover? Nothing really. And if I go into here, well, now I've got his legs covered, but I'm outside of his hands. But I would like to spar with me. And uh, things that I used to uh, bring back here, like slip kicks, uh, uh, sweeps. Uh, there was a guy in um, Europe uh, when I was over there in the early 60s and 70s. Um, his name was Tiki Donovan. Good sweeper. Um, a leg sweep and some of the guys that I was talking about uh, for sweeping when they used to sweep they used to come down uh, it's like um, uh, Nick uh, uh, you'll appreciate this um, when uh, ankles you know a lot of guys would try and sweep at the ankles you know uh, but to me it's if you get the rhythm going and as the person's going up and just before he comes down you know then you sweep but it's uh, using your leg almost, you have to lock your ankle a certain way. And if you don't, you might as well throw the sweep out. You know, your ankle goes this way. Um, uh, you hit with the, the um, inside of the foot too much. It's like somebody picking up a front kick to throw a kick and the toes are like this and they're gonna throw a front kick forward, you know? Um, does that make sense to you, Nick? With the does sweep? Does indeed. Okay? Does indeed. We, we got to talk about New York, my friend. We really do. Because <laughs> there's uh, New York uh, is uh, where my heart was at one time. There's a lot of good people came out of New York. Um, there was a lot of people that I trained with uh, in New York. George Coldfield, uh, Thomas Le Puppet, uh, uh, good judo people, good jujitsu people, um, and uh, uh, not bad kata people, you know. But I'm sorry. Uh, Oh, not at all. No, these are your answers. Um, if everyone in the world could have the greatest benefit you've gotten from martial arts, whether they train or not, what would it be? Um, something that I would like to share with everybody, and that is breathing. Proper breathing. Because breathing to me is something that is, uh, and I, you know, I, I've listened and I've gone through, uh, you know, here's your ha da, 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 you know, um, uh, even the guys that are fighting um, uh, amateur, uh, there, there's a huge difference between your sport karate, uh, your amateur, your tag, your, you know, you've got different uh, people right now, they're doing different things uh, in tournaments, you know, um, sport, art, reality, I mean, all those things that, uh, um, you know, I, again, it's a package or something that I put together uh, years ago. And I, I'm going to share that with people. But breathing to me is I used to watch the guys do the uh, goju katas years back. You know, and I used to look at them and I go, holy shit, man, you're either going to pass out, kill yourself or your brain's going to go, uh, you know. And I, I said, you, you can't do that, you know? It's like uh, when uh, kids, I remember, um, you know, they used to say, take 10 deep breaths and somebody grab uh, behind and they'd squeeze. Next thing you know, the guy's passed out, you know, yeah. hypermental. Yeah. You know? And it's, uh, so that's one thing. Uh, there's a lot of things I like to pass on in a, uh, going to your question next five years, you know, 
And uh, I plan on to being around here for the next 20 or 30 years. So, you know, I, I hear these guys saying, well, I've been teaching um, and no disrespect to a lot of them, but, you know, I, they say I've been teaching for 55 years. I know the guys have been teaching for 55 years because I was there watching them uh, uh, learning how to do a high block and outside and inside, you know, um, uh, and breaking down the katas bunkai. That's another thing that I'd like to um, really address is uh, how to really break down um, bunkais and katas, you know, and the why. Uh, you know, it's like uh, the guys are doing bunkais and they say, okay, I hit the guy like this and then I wrap like this and I do this and I lock him here and I do this and I, you know, I do this and, you know, and I go, uh, okay, now let me get that straight. You hit the guy and you wrap. Well, I know damn well, I mean, it just makes sense to me. If I hit a guy, he's over there. He's not standing here, you know? So how can I hit the guy, wrap the guy, you know? So you bang a guy, he's got, you know, it's like throwing a left hand at somebody. You hit a guy, man, he's moving backwards, you know? Unless you don't hit him, unless you just tag him, you know? So there's a lot of things that I would love to, in the next five years, give, you know? Um, uh, and hopefully, um, see, the thing is, uh, conversations that we're having here, like right now, I love it. I, I really, truly do, is because if... Um, you're okay to listen. You're going to pick something up. You're going to learn something, you know? Um, and that's where the thing is right now is, uh, you know, my grandson is like, and I, I'm, I'm talking to him and hey, I'll tell you, some of these kids make a lot of money playing those games. I, I just, I yeah, went through a friend of mine, we went through, you know, some, a million dollars. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. a million bucks? Yeah. And I went, wow, you know, but it keeps them active, but to me, the the brain um, and you know everybody has to do studies, you know, and read things. It's uh, you know somebody said, do you know what the Freudian theory is? And I go, I think I do. He says, do you know what the Pavlov theory is? I said, I think I do. He said, what is it? I said, it's conditioning. What do you mean conditioning? Conditioning. Come in, bow, kneel sit, stand, let me kick you, tighten up your face, let me see how hard you, you, you know, conditioning, you know, people are going to have to start listening, and um, really listening, watching, so when I say, okay, throw a punch, and somebody goes, bang, throw a punch, so what's the difference between this punch, and this punch, well, the first punch, I went like this, second punch I went like this you know so my elbows are so to me it's uh, um, uh, it's uh, you, you know somebody says wow that's beautiful let me do it you know um, I, I think people have to slow down a little bit everything's too fast too quick boom 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 you know slow down take your time relax you know there's a song out there uh be happy, you know, what's that song, how it goes, be happy, you, hey, don't get stressed, you know, don't get stressed. So the last two questions for you come as one, as with all yeah. our guests, greatest achievement, greatest regret. Greatest achievement, man, oh man, uh, uh, my daughter, my, uh, you know, life uh, itself, uh, uh, regrets, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe tomorrow I might have some regrets. I don't know. Um, um, you, oh, that's what it is. Somebody said something earlier in this program, and I want to know, why can't I get paid as much as the other guys got paid? I look at the, 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 the payment that you guys gave me, and it's not, it's not as much as the other guys. How come? It's a big regret. <laughs> <laughs> no you know what it uh i i, I don't want to get paid for anything it uh have i got regrets no uh, i you know i i uh, did i do some 
did I do some crazy things? Yeah. Um, I do have regrets that um, I keep on biting my tongue and people ask me why. And uh, they say, uh, because I see uh, somebody, um, uh, his terminology is always being next, next. And th th that's the type of person that just irritates me, you know, uh, because he um, or they have uh, done something and they don't give a damn about the martial arts. You know, there are people that are in the martial arts that don't care. All they're there for is for themselves. And that's what irritates me. You know, so uh, my regrets, I have none. I, um, when I was younger, um, I used to uh, look at uh, guys in the tournament um, or I'd, uh, you know, they used to say I was cocky. Maybe I was, but um, I had a reason for it because I used to watch these guys that couldn't punch their way out of a paper bag. And I used to say, hey, do something, you know, um, bah, I can't, buy, you know, but anyways, it, uh, that is back then. I don't know how it is now because I don't go to these tournaments. I don't, uh, I, I don't watch uh, the guys, you know, I hear, uh, there's a lot of tournaments out there, you know, uh, tapping and slapping and, you know, um, uh, I, I do a lot of, um, um, uh, I guess your terminology, Nick is rolling. Is that what it is? I, I call I, it these days. Yeah. See, I, I, I love to work on the ground. You know, it's uh, I, I feel comfortable on there. You know, some of the guys don't uh, like what I do, but I, you know, they, they're always trying to either choke or, you know, and I play with them and it's all conditioning, nothing else, you know, and staying relaxed, you know. Um, and again, it's engage or dis, uh, disengage, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, you take your time, it'll be there, you know. Um, I, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I was working with somebody um, uh, before uh, that demo that I did with Bel uh, Billy. Now, Billy and myself being friends for a long time, and uh, originally that uh, fight that we did was supposed to be a demonstration, but it was uh, uh, set up or structured, tried to be set up by someone that, uh, um, uh, I, in my mind, I, what I did is I, I trained and I was ready to go three rounds, four rounds, five rounds. It didn't matter. Um, you know, kick, punch, choke, uh, your terminology, Jack. chop, whatever. Uh, I was prepared. <laughs> but uh, Billy and myself have been friends for a long, long time. Um, have we competed against each other? Absolutely. Uh, before. Um, uh, Billy and myself, surprisingly, have always been the same weight category, and that's being middleweight. But I've always been shot up into the life heavy or the heavyweights, but middleweight. Uh, timing is, Randy, uh, are we uh, sh short of time? We're getting close. Uh, okay. Sensitive. Anyways, we're actually, sorry. We're six um, minutes over as of now. Oh, okay. Did I answer some of the questions? I think you got to most of them, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, no, Conroy's question. Was he okay? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just said Bermuda was tough, oh, and, and oh, he appreciated your oh, answer. Okay. Is Conroy off the air right now? Um, I'm no, not he's, sure. he's on. Oh. He's yeah. watching. He's, yeah. he's one of our, our, our Conroy supporters. Had, Conroy had flat feet. That's why he couldn't move that. No, I'm just joking, Conroy. <laughs> Conroy was a good competitor. You know, very good. Very strong competitor. Um, Sensei, yeah. the way yeah. we do wind down our show and, and it, every guest we've ever had just goes, what do you mean? That's, that's it. Because an hour and a half seems like a lot and then it isn't. Um, but it the way isn't. we like to go out is we, we go around the horn, as I like to say, and, and we all just say a bit about our, our joy of listening to you and, and what we picked up from it. And then the last word will go to you, uh, aside from just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so I'm just going to throw it to you, Hunch. You like to see, is there anything you want to say or, or just pass on or share your idea of what his regret might have been? Well, no, I don't think it, his regret might have been kicking me that one time and fl making me fly across the room. <laughs> Could that be a regret? <laughs> you know what? It, um, um, did I kick you? 
Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> did I? Did I? Did you, I had a, kick you, ah. <laughs> you had a broken arm. In ah, the no, 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 no. You know that arm was in a sling. So that arm was in 1971. That's and, right. Uh, I had that in a sling. Um, I don't know whether um, I uh, I was thrown by my horse or something, but I remember uh, uh, exactly because right after I took uh, my arm out of the sling, I did that demonstration with Joe Lewis here in Toronto. Mm. So I had my arm in a sling for a year and a half. Um, yes, I remember that one hand. Um, uh, you were training with um, a couple people in London, and I remember trying to teach uh, blocks with one hand. Yes. Uh, you guys were trying to pick on me. You you were the <laughs> ones that trying to kick me and punch me. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> now, now I remember. Everybody's oh, trying to get their glory. <laughs> now, now I remember. You were one of those guys that tried to get uh, uh, testing. Hey, ah, now I remember. <laughs> anyway, it was uh, you. You were my teacher back in those days. I appreciate it, and um, also my hero. And you know, I know that may sound weird yeah. from an old guy like me, but I went to all your fights. You know what? It uh, yeah. it was always a pleasure with uh, the guys because uh, um, my goal was uh, always to give. You know, and um, I, I made sure I. I I tried to stay out of the politics, uh, but uh, I, I tried to give uh, not only to uh, the uh, Okinawan, the Japanese, the Chinese, uh, you know. So um, one of the things is, and thank you for saying that, is uh, my DNA is virtually in everybody that's uh, out there right now. Because, um, you know, there's only a few people left. is, uh, uh, And uh, a lot of the people should... Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk to uh, Sensei Higashi uh, because, um, you know, the politics again, um, I, I think uh, uh, Sensei Soroka was taken advantage of uh, in many ways. And uh, when it comes to system styles, uh, you know, who's better, Shito, Chito, uh, you all came from the same place, you know. So um, to me, um, um, you know, working out and teaching. Um, yes, and I'm going to continue, and I'm going to show, um, and uh, I'd love to, love to. Yeah, you know, I so. appreciate it. Yeah. Hopefully, when this is all over with, we can get together over here in London. That's what you kept on saying now for the past 30 years, 40 years. Not <laughs> true. I had you up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it, uh, back then, some of the guys were too young to go for a beer, you know, so... Um, that's uh, to me. That's what I enjoyed. Is after a competition, is going out and you know grabbing a pizza and uh, a nice cold beer with a. Uh, uh, back then, I used to uh, love to have a beer and a cavassier, a nice cognac, you know. And, yeah, uh, I that like to that. I have was... a bottle here. Oh, hey. Oh yeah. <laughs> Conversier. Conversier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Thanks for that, Hanchi. Um, Sensei Suino. What uh, what do you want to what do you want to throw out in the mix? You know, it just it's it's a, such a great com uh, conversation. I love uh, I love hearing uh, a different point of view on history. Uh, uh, Sensei Slucky from somebody who's been in it for so long, and of course for selfish reasons, I love the fact that as somebody who's so accomplished in the striking arts and so famous for fighting for. Uh, uh, we spent so much time talking about judo, so that made you my know, night. I don't know about know anybody we, else's. <laughs> hey, no, we didn't. We only touched on it. You know, well, it's a lot of people is um, I'm afraid of saying something that will uh, uh, not embarrass, but uh, um, you know, there, there's guys out there that uh, um, you know. Now I, I see them as uh, eighth, nine, tenth degrees, and I'm going, yeah, phony. Son of a, how the hell did you, you know, be, I, I know everybody's history, you know, so that's when, when somebody asks me a question, I, I, I try and skirt, I, I just, I, I, you know, I, I like to be nice, you know, uh, but uh, with, with judo, I love to talk about it, and uh, to me, it's um, uh, working that balance, working that timing, working that, uh, it's technique, 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 and it's rhythm, you know, 
to me it's rhythm all the time yeah. and I, I that's uh, I, I enjoyed the groundwork we didn't uh, talk a little bit uh, you know about uh, the guys in New York there were some good guys uh, jujitsu guys there in New York you know um, Wally J everybody talks about Wally J I brought Wally J in um, the early uh, uh, 70s uh, be, before anybody you know you, you hear stories of guys um, you know uh, learning from Wally J and then uh, you know as a matter of fact there's a picture in one of the books and it, it's got a caption under there Wally J 1970 and then you look at the picture and there's a poster on the back of the wall and the poster is 1973 you know it uh, so you know, people are just, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I like to roll if that's what you call it. I'm very comfortable on the ground, but my thing is how to get the person on the ground. And then once you got them on the ground, that's it for me, because I will not spend too much time on my back, especially out in the street. Mm. To me, if I'm out in the street, my first rule of thumb is do not, do not get on your back and get your ass up and get out of there real fast, you know? So when they say teach a woman self-defense, um, you know, on the back, um, th that's a position that women will get into is on their back. But I'll tell you, learn how to get up as quickly as you possibly can. And I'm sorry, uh, Sean, for taking up the time. And Not at all. I'm going to throw it over to Sensei yeah. Dauphin. He's yeah. going to share his perspective and thoughts and enjoy of the evening as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Sensei Sloki, I always write these notes as uh, we're doing these interviews of things that kind of resonated with me. And I have no shortage of notes having talked to you uh, tonight and listened to you. Um, one of the first things you said that I really liked was that uh, you said you got into trouble when you were a kid and that you have to let kids get into trouble. I think that's uh, actually really true. You got to let kids get into trouble. Um, I thought it was an interesting image about... Uh, um, Sensei uh, Frank Hadashida and your dad and the deal that they made together whatever that might be but that's just interesting in my mind I really like the image of you as a kid in the in the 50s wandering around in Toronto and peeking into these uh, these Chinese martial arts schools through through the hole to look in there I thought that that was pretty cool and I really liked uh, that you talked about that you saw actually Sensei Higashi receive his black belt at that tournament in 1963. That was no, um, I didn't see him get his black belt. He had his black belt at that time. Um, you know, uh, there was uh, other people. I, I, I found some nice pictures uh, as well with uh, um, Thomas La Puppet when he was here in Toronto. And I'm in that uh, tournament uh, competing against uh, a couple of the guys. But in that same photo, you see some of the guys like Fred Boyko and Hal Henshaw in that same picture. So, you know, uh, time, time frame is really important. Timeline is important, you know, uh, because a lot of people, they talk about certain things. Um, so to me, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, important. Uh, w when you were talking about uh, um, um, people and everything else and... Uh, and I was saying New York uh, uh, and, uh, you know, people taking stories and sort of making it their own. Um, in New York City, there was a fellow that, again, is being missed in a lot of things. His name was Chin Man Chen. So the guys used to take me, um, uh, when I took the guys into New York, that's when uh, Peter Urban moved his dojo so he they didn't have a chance to go to the original dojo that I uh, worked out uh, there at uh, you know and his wife uh, he was uh, he uh, he went a little strange later on in years but at the beginning he was a pretty sharp way ahead of his uh, uh, thing uh, plan but um, between um, and uh, Nicholas you probably know New York is uh, because I even opened up a, an office in 1972 uh, for a friend of mine that had a business here. So in Brooklyn, I opened up uh, a business for him there and I set up uh, the procedures and everything for his business. It had totally nothing to do with the martial arts, but it was another business. Oh, I think we had a pause there. Yeah, we're running out of time. 
Yeah. But uh, uh, for me, know, um, um, Sensei Sloki, we're, we've lost you digitally. Um, so I'm going to throw it back to Sensei Dolphin right now. And I don't know if you're going to pick up on okay. that because we yeah. can't hear you. So the other things I liked, Sean, that uh, Sensei Sloki said was, uh, I like the image of, you know, in 1964, him being in Hamilton, and that's where he kind of... And you had, not for me, it's... Sorry, what? So, oh, we you, lost you been... for a sec, so we went back to Sensei oh. Dolphin. Oh, you, it's my int uh, uh, thing that's gone? Um, we're, you're back now, but Sensei Dolphin, oh. this is his time. He's just sort of expressing oh. some things oh. he picked up on that he enjoyed, oh. and then... I, I think it's uh, uh, somebody sabotaging this right now. Uh, <laughs> we are we are getting short on time. We we we're asking people to stay uh, a little yeah. bit later. So yeah, all yeah. I'm going to say so, is to you guys before you sign off, uh, just for a second, Nicholas. If you guys need some help in the U.S. Um, on uh, how to uh, uh, get your students active again and how to keep the students and how to engage with them. And it's difficult, I know, over the Zoom thing, but there is a process, there is a way. Uh, and if I can help you guys out, I will. Uh, I think I do know of a, um, it's good for everybody. That's all I can say. So if you ever want, just give me a shout. Thank you, that's a great okay. offer. Yeah. Sensei Dovan? Um, it's okay. You take it away. And then uh, I'd like to just talk about the next couple episodes. Okay. Thanks, Sensei. Um, yeah, for me, like, Sensei yeah. Sloki, the one thing I just want to say, you know, I really appreciate when you talked about greed, ego, and anger as the ways that other people respond that we can take advantage of. I, I wrote that down and uh, I thought that was great. And I also thought it was great when you said the guys out there right now. It's and I know in you meant somebody's book that they took. So that ego, greed, and anger somebody put in one of their books, but there's four steps. Ego, greed, and anger is the first three. There's one left that I haven't mentioned. Right on, well, you, you get to keep that one for your own trickiness. Hey, I shouldn't have given that information out uh, back then, you know? <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna throw it to Sensei Dolphin, who's gonna talk a bit about our next few weeks of our show. So we're back to some punch, kick, choke, chat, housekeeping, and then we're gonna give you the, the final goodbye, Sensei. Sensei Dolphin? Yeah, thanks, Sean. Uh, I also like before I get into who's coming, I just some people have just been supporting us so much. Uh, people like Alan Panecki and uh, Doug, Doug Nipsel and Sensei Copeland. Uh, there's just so many people, uh, Sensei Smolensky. These people have just been signing in week in and week out. And I've just really I'm so grateful to those people for supporting us. Um, but we're going to take a week off next week. And then the next three uh, day, the next three Thursdays after that at our regular time, we're going to be talking with uh, Ken Talek first, and then Daryl Hannigan, a uh, great kickboxing champion in his own right. And then we're going to do something for a first that we've never done before is we're going to have uh, Hunchy Cesar Burkowski and Hunchy John Terrian on simultaneous uh to be chatting. You know what? I would love. I'm super excited. You know, I think that would be great if you get uh, there. Um, as a matter of fact, I tried to get uh, Caesar, Pat, uh, 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 Pat uh, McCarthy, uh, myself, and one other person together to talk just like this. I think that would be very interesting. Sensei, I don't know if anybody else lost Shot, you, eh? but we that? lost you again. Did we lose yeah. him again? Or was that just me? Oh, um, it was a little glitchy, but I think we a had little him. little glitchy, but that's a great idea. And then you can chat with Robert about just, we could all set up a, a Zoom and just chat privately and have a nice afternoon with it. Um, I just yeah, want to say thanks to everybody. It... And also we're going to be doing uh, at least two of those weeks with me in France. I'm not going to say why yet, yeah. but uh, we're going to be asynchronous with me in another place. I um, give us give us a give us a quick goodbye, Sensei. Uh, we, we are a little over, but we'd love to hear your last words. You know what? This reminds me of how tournaments used to be. Is at one time everybody used to stay around until the very end, and then as time went forward, and uh, it's possibly the same thing as this. 
you know, you got people that are sitting there, but they're all gone right now. So they don't want to listen to the uh, final goodbye. Our hour and a half, definitely when it runs over, we do lose our guests. Yeah. 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 So there are ways that I think that, uh, see right now you guys and everybody else is what is coming forward? How do I, um, how do we stay in the business? How do we uh, generate uh, more interest? How do we, you know, all those questions. Um, and I'm glad that you guys are working together, but uh, there's certain things that need to be addressed in my opinion, you know, so. Well, um, I appreciate that Sensei. And um, we look forward to chatting with you about that. To everybody mm -hmm. else, we look forward to seeing you in the upcoming weeks. Enjoy yeah. your week off. Thank you everybody for joining us. As always, I just love our Thursday nights on Punch, Kick, Choke, Chat. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Sensei. Right. Thanks so Bye, much, everybody. Thanks, Sensei.